Creativity. What is it? And how and why does it happen? We will try to answer these questions by looking closely at a place where for over 20 years there's been an outpouring of extreme creativity. In the middle of the Australian continent is a sparsely populated desert. And yet, it is here that a curious phenomenon occurred. People started making beanies. Lots of beanies. What is a beanie? A beanie is something that keeps your head warm. Doesn't matter what it's made of, you've got to keep your head warm. People began dreaming up beanies that were out of this world. Ordinary people who have never made a beanie before began to create unbelievable beanies. Wild and woolly headgear is being celebrated in Alice Springs this weekend. Annual extravagance of colourful headwear held in the Australian desert city of Alice Springs. Beanies began coming into the little town of Alice Springs from tiny remote communities throughout central Australia. So many amazing beanies were arriving that the good people of Alice Springs were compelled to create a festival honouring beanies. Such a um, transformation from that very first beanie festival where we had a hundred hanging, just a hundred beanies hanging from the roof at that first festival, which we thought was so fantastic and um, so amazing to see these hundred beanies. And now we've got six thousand beanies being unpacked. Thousands of beanies began to fly in from all over Australia and across the seas. Tourists from all over the world flew in to witness this curious event. The town authorities were forced to acknowledge that Alice Springs is indeed the beanie capital of the world. They began to parade themselves in far-flung parts of our great land. Beanie road shows, travelling exhibitions, and even a wonderful play. Are these beanies unstoppable? Scientists and wise old men were alarmed at this new phenomenon. I don't believe it. Yeah, I don't know what's going on here. I'll have to call in the expert, Dr. Wilsley. He's the only one that knows. Uh, well, I can answer that question. Um, it's a combination of global warming and the fact that the centre of Australia is the centre of Australia. And the global warming has caused currents of air to go up to the back of people's heads into the far-flung areas of Australia, and that has sent them off in this direction with the, in order to uh, make beanies as they come. And the beanies uh, 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 are assembled, assembling here, but it's also to do with the tectonic plates. And the tectonic plates have moved up north, and that's sent people the urge to make these incredibly beautiful things. It's a survival. So, there's some solid scientific evidence as to why there are extra beanies. But of all places, why Central Australia? So I'm just going to tell you the story. Um, so I met A.D. Dunlop um, in 1996. She's very intrigued uh, for women spinning wool. So she would go out down into the indigenous communities out in Alice Springs and um, because of her love of beanies, got the ladies learning how to crochet beanies. And it was about them having a product and bringing it into a festival to celebrate not only their culture, but producing something. She came up with an idea, we're sitting around the table at work, she says, 
I'm going to have a beanie festival. And I said to her, why are you going to have a beanie festival? She said, oh, just for fun. So being very artistic, created these amazing posters of black and white and our first Beanie Festival poster went up. We had a newsletter that went out and in that newsletter we asked people to provide wool so that the ladies not only at Nunglinga but everywhere else can be inspired by beanies. And we got lots of donations of wool and all us ladies who didn't know how to crochet learned to crochet. And then it was um, came time for a festival down in Alice Springs. Um, so that was the birth of the Beanie Festival all those years ago. After much searching, I've finally found a person who's been there from its very origins. Her name is Aidy. Oh. Hello, Aidy. Oh. <laughs> Suppose one, one of the um, interesting aspects of co-creation between um, between the Europeans and the Aboriginal Australians was that sheep was brought into the mix somehow yeah. and um, I heard that of some of some creativity that came from a town called Ernabella, did I get that right? Yes, yes. Ernabella is a wonderful place. Um, huge amounts of, of creativity happening there. Um, it's a beautiful little art centre. It's actually the first Indigenous art centre in Australia wow. is at Ernabella. Aborigines made beanies before white people turned up, although you call them more as a skull cap. They were much smaller, um, and made mainly out of possum skin, possum hair and, and human hair. Um, this is one of the uh, pigeon, uh, women from um, um, Ernabella made this out of sheep wool, which they, they rolled on their and their um, thigh and spun. So this is uh, about as close as we can get to, um, If luckily, unfortunately it's not possum hair, but as close as you can get to the original bill be beanies that the Aborigines used to make before we turned up. So when the mission started at Ernabella in 1937, there wasn't very much money at all and one of the ways in which the Presbyterian Board of Missions, which set up that mission station, after the urging of Dr. Charles Duguid, um, was to bring in sheep as a, as, a, as a way of making money. There was just enough water that far west for that to be viable, although bores did have to be sunk. And so at its height, the Unabena mission was running up to probably nearly 5,000 head of sheep, which is pretty substantial. And the men were um, learning all of the technical aspects of sheep care. First of all, there would be sheep camps where families would camp with a small mob of sheep and look after them, keep the dingoes away. And then as more and more fences got made, that became easier. There was a shearing shed built and men learned to shear and to do all of the other things that are necessary to to manage and care for the sheep flock. Uh, they had quite a big sheep, sheep flock at Ernabella and so there was a, a need for to do something with the wool and uh, so some of the um, uh, Aboriginal women uh, got right into it and started making woolen objects um, and so uh, they um, very easily fell into the whole business of uh, making beanies for sale. And the women were employed in, first of all, spinning wool, and then later on making that through handloom weaving and other handwork into all sorts of wonderful, wonderful items. Um, that work was brought to a very high pitch of, of beauty and, and uh, effect. Beautiful handloomed uh, rugs, shawls, um, plaid, uh, it was a Presbyterian mission, um, and all sorts of remarkable things, as well as hand-pulled rugs. Um, the, the, the woolen material was dyed, where possible, with, with natural dyes. Um, but once the, once the early missionaries realised that, that the women already had the skill of spinning a thread, that 
obviously opened up the, the gates to a great deal more production. We have beanies in the festival every year that have been made using the um, pitch and jar spindle and those beanies for me, those hand spun beanies, are the most beautiful pieces. And the artists spin them all, they use, you know, sheepy wool as they call it, camel wool and they make the most gorgeous pieces and in this forum, in this uh, gallery forum, those beanies, they glow, they absolutely glow. Over here are, um, come from Annabella and Annabella is the, you know, the number one beanie making community. There's old ladies there that have been making beanies for years and years and years and spinning their own yarn and crocheting and but they've also been introduced to needle felting but they still crochet and they needle felt so it's an honour to um, be able to hang these beanies in the gallery and, and see them yeah see them come back year after year and the ladies from Ernabella of course come into the festival each year and demonstrate their tra traditional spinning and um, it's always an honour and it's so special to have them at the festival. We're so proud of the Annabella ladies. They've been a part of the festival for so many years and um, we've got some special crowns for them. Okay, you've got to take your mukata off and put this one on. Oh, Apalya! Kaca, <laughs> There's a beautiful painting that I saw once um, that kind of summed this up. This moment uh, in, in Australian history when the traditional technology of, of the Anangu spinning was combined with wool. And the painting shows a circle of spindles, which are very sacred items actually, around the head of a, of a, of a sheep. And um, this is, this is a painting that was done um, quite a few years ago that expressed this thought that the women used to sit around in a circle and use, use the sheep wool. When two cultures bump up together, if there is respect and people actually listen to each other, then something new and, and strong can can be made. The two the two cultures are weaving together to make something really strong. And, and and this is one small example that happened in in Central Australia in Adernabella. I think the festival has been such a site of textile innovation in this country. And if you look around now, you can see how all the communities have taken needle felting and made it their own. So many of the uh, Central Australian artists are, um, they're used to working in paint and they're really into the dec decorative art, surface art. And the needle felting has allowed them to translate their stories from different mediums into, into beanie making. 
and so we get these incredible colours and stories being translated from their stories into beanies. But this is my favourite beanie. This is the beanie about the Alice Springs Fink Desert Race, which is a big um, motorbike and buggy car desert race in Alice Springs. And, and a young girl has made little motorbikes racing around the top of the beanie and she's got the cars smashing up and racing through the desert. And um, yeah, that's, that's one of my favourite stories because it sort of brings black and white together. So they burn the holes into the Aninti seeds and then they can um, embellish their beanies with Aninti seeds and with, of course, the amazing emu feathers, which are out, like a absolutely signature to Ernabella, particularly. And of course, you know, another craft that the women do there are the amazing hand painted gum nuts. And so we get these beautiful beanies that also incorporate these gum nuts, the feathers, the aninti seeds, the hand spun. You know, I've gone to heaven, honestly. They're beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I think anything that opens up. Um, being able to do something and the pride and the joy and the artistic endeavour that you know you can express yourself through it and you can get outrageous or you can keep it simple, you can make it functional, you can mm -hmm. make it funky. It's like, it's you all can there. bring families together, you can sit down yeah. and enjoy one another's company. Yeah, sit down Just around the fire at night. Yarn. <laughs> You've been in there from the very beginning. Can you tell us about how it began and um, why do you think it took off? Um, well, I'll, I'll tell you a little story. So, I had been working in a remote area for some time and I um, had become really good friends with some of the, the ladies there, working closely together. And at the end of the week they said to me, why don't we all go for a a little trip out bush and so we all piled into a four-wheel drive and headed off. This was Walpree country, not country I'd been used to so it was all new to me and they told me the stories of the, the land as we went and it was about dusk when we arrived at this beautiful camp spot. It was uh, just a dry river bed. We all got out our our wool and hooks and we started finishing off our beanies. The beautiful stars came down and it was just one of those perfect evenings and we all went to bed and everybody must have been touched by something. because everyone in the morning had new ideas. And it made me really think, we could do this, we could do this. So what's been quite amazing actually is, is knowing how big this f festival is with people from all over the world sending thousands of beanies in. Mm. How did these ideas spread? Well, it's a very simple process. One person teaches another person, and then that person teaches another person, and it just seems to spread like a virus. Exponentially, it just goes and goes and goes, until practically everyone is making beanies. Grandparents, old men, young men, everyone is making beanies because people share their knowledge that way. And I see the time, scows and fire, making the stars into the night. And I see the time, how is the only man living in this great land? And I see the time, young cockatoo, and haul all the roads that become understand. <laughs> That's you, I see river, <laughs> I see mountain, I 
beautiful crafts that I've created. I think that's one, probably the takeout for me is that these lovely crafts are valued and the makers are valued. I see river I see mountain I see rain with all Aboriginal design suits and dresses and ties and uh, beanies and, um, and they come out and walk really proud, eh? like yeah, really tall. Yeah, eh? yeah. And we seen them at the back back of the stage, hey, we don't want to go out, we shame, we don't yeah, want to yeah, go yeah. out. And then they come out, woo, big cheer, eh? yeah, big that's cheer. It. That's nice. Underneath it all was more than just the festival. It was about helping Indigenous people. It was about bringing people together in a colourful way, and the colourful way is the beanie. And it's about everyone gathering together and having a great time through arts. Interesting, isn't it? Something so simple that's been around for so long can become a galvanising force to bring people together for a celebration. I mean, in the end, it's just a humble being. Yes. <laughs> All right, <laughs> that's well said, Robin. It's easy, you know. Um, would you like to learn? Oh, I'm way too clumsy. <laughs> There's no way. Oh, no, no, you can. <laughs> you can. The only thing is, I have to give a warning. Uh -huh. There is a warning. Okay. There's a thing called beanieitis. <laughs> it is a real thing. Don't laugh. It is a real thing. Now, when beanieitis infects you, you cannot stop making things. You just are compelled to make beans. Two on the log. Yep. Into the hole. Yeah, onto the, the hole. hole. Yep. We call that like. Oh, okay. Yep. The, so, in the story, the frogs are really hot, and, yep. and it's hard going. So, I came here to learn about this mysterious thing called creativity. And to be honest, I'm no closer to the truth of where it comes from. But I've discovered that the people of Central Australia have found a way of sharing joy.
So you want to talk about how you guys met first? And yeah, from, and maybe. Well, I'm just so low in the middle. Oh. <laughs>